Hello everyone, in this video we are looking at 5 relatively popular budget action cameras that are capable of doing 4K video. Each one of these cameras are using Umbrella A12S75 chip. However, they are different in their own ways. They are built differently and comes packaged with different items and has different price tags. Thus, different cameras will appeal to different potential buyers for different reasons. Let's find out more. Introduction of the cameras. From Xiaomi, we have the Mijia Mini. From Hawkeye, we have Firefly 8S. From Ti, we have T5E. From Eken, we have V8S. And finally, from SJ Cam, we have the SJ7 Star. Please note, the competitive nature of the market causes the prices to change. I have placed the links for each camera in the description below. Please check for updated prices. So let's start with the inclusions. The least in this category is provided by Mijia Mini. They basically shipped out the camera with a micro USB cable. Not even a waterproof case is included. If you need anything else, you'll have to purchase them separately. Going up slightly is the T5V with the waterproof case, an extra battery and one set of mounting hardware. The three others have full box of accessories. Some notable items being V8S comes with a mini tripod, a charger and a remote is also included. The Firefly comes with a lens hood and a detachable label which of course the camera body caters for. The SJ7 comes with a mounting frame that is more user friendly and two different back covers for the touchscreen for different diving depths. Let's look at the build quality. Straight off the line, I can say the best build quality is presented by the SJ7. Its frame is made using aluminum and the overall construction is exactly what we would expect from a premium device. As far as construction is concerned, while the Mijia Mini has a plastic body, it is made very nicely and does not feel like a budget product. The V8S front panel is brushed aluminum but the remainder of the body is plastic. The Firefly and T5V are on par as far as construction is concerned. Nothing wrong with the plastic body they have and I'm not at all saying anything negative. Just one thing to make sure is the T5E looks like it has aluminum front panel, it is plastic. Another thing to note is that the SJ7 and V8S are the only two cameras in this list that does not have a tripod mount. Operation most would find Mijia Mini and the SJ7 to have the upper hand as far as ease of use goes. They have different layouts as far as buttons are concerned and they both rely heavily on the touchscreen for operations of the camera. The SJ7 does have slight advantage here because it has more buttons complementing the menu operations. Next is the Firefly 8S. While it does not have a touchscreen, the menu system is the easiest to work with and the buttons are logical in relation to the menu. The T5e menu was a little less easy to work with but the worst was in the V8s. You have to press the menu button six times then the action button once to get to the menu and the menu is equally less friendly to use with the three buttons this camera has. It's dreadful. Let's quickly touch upon the battery. The biggest battery in all these cameras was in Mijia Mini. At 1450 mAh, under test conditions it performed well and recorded 4K video to 1 hour and 15 minutes, which is very good. The SJ7 and Firefly both managed close to 1 hour of video in 4K, which is great considering the battery in SJ7 is the oldest and most used in this collection. I do not have a figure for T5V as it died during the original review. But it did well as I remember the battery life was not a major concern at the time. Plus, they shipped two batteries just in case. Lastly, the V8S. The poorest performer in the bunch as far as battery life is concerned as tested during the review. This camera at the time of making the video is also dead but for a different reason. As mentioned earlier, each one of these camera is using Umbrella A12S75 chip as its CPU. What this CPU allows these cameras to do, among other things, is to record in ultra high definition or UHD with resolution of 3840 x 2160. We can loosely refer to this as 
4K. Each one of these cameras do electronic stabilization, except there is a limitation on the chip. It can only stabilize video up to the setting of 1920 times 1080 at 60 FPS. The exception here is Eken V8S, which has stabilization for every video setting, including the 4K, but it is always on as well. Now let's talk about the video quality. I'll start with Eken V8S, and with good reason. You see, the V8S is the only camera in the bunch that does stabilization at 4K, but with a trade-off. The CPU can only handle so much, somehow Eken got the CPU to process the 4K video encoding while at the same time running the stabilization process. The result therefore is poor video quality. Some venture to say that this was due to the lens used, but it's not the lens. The file generated has 3840x2160 at 24fps at 60mbps. The problem is when we play the video it looks like it has been compressed rather severely. I have seen some videos in YouTube calling this good quality video. They either are unable to compare with a good quality 4K video or do not have a 4K display system or worst they are paying lip service to the manufacturers. Anyone who has seen a 4K video play on a 4K display will not find what comes out of this camera praiseworthy. The remainder of the four cameras are very close in performance as far as video quality goes. Yes, there are some differences, but we will have to split hair to tell them apart. The SJ7, Firefly 8S and the T5e uses a Sony IMX117 sensor, while the Mijia Mini uses a IMX317 sensor. This sensor has some advantages in terms of dynamic range and low light performance. Again, to tell them apart is difficult. With the V8S, I asked Eken repeatedly what the model of the sensor was. They did not clarify that information. More on that subject later. Now about the stabilization. All of the camera have stabilization, but as mentioned earlier, with the exception of V8S, all of them are limited to full HD resolution at 60 FPS. So if you are after stabilized video, you are better off buying something like SJCam SJ6. Till date, it happens to have one of the better in-camera stabilization system. And it can produce a decent QHD video at 30 FPS stabilized as well. SJCam in general has their gyro system tuned nicely. Firefly and T5e does the job decent enough. Mijia Mini, while boasting a 6-axis stabilization system, at times I found it to be jumpy. And now we look at slow motion. Again, starting with the V8S, I'll say simply that it does not have any. No slow motion in V8S. Next is Mijia Mini. From the remainder of the cameras, Mijia Mini has an odd 200 FPS at 720p and 100 FPS at Full HD. The other three cameras have 240 and 120 FPS settings. There was another issue identified during the test. At 200 FPS, the video quality is not exactly sharp. There appears to be more pixelation than what a 720p video should have. Possibly something that could be tuned via a firmware update. It's doubtful though if Xiaomi is interested in updating the firmware. The remaining three, T5e, Firefly 8s and the SJ7 all produce about the same result and they are clean enough to get the job done. Video quality in general, I'm happy with the four cameras leaving out the V8s. The fact that 4K cannot be used with stabilization remains an issue that I could not come in terms with. If held still on a tripod, the 4K video is good enough. By no means is the video quality any close to, let's say, what comes out of a GH4. But yes, it's 4K and reasonable. I'd also like to discuss the subject of dependability. This is more involved issue to cover, but a critically important one if you are considering purchasing any one of these cameras. First, I'll start with the T5e. This camera died because the waterproof housing leaked at 1 meter depth. That was the end of this camera. The case was later tested and the leak was confirmed. I thought at the time the manufacturing issue was one off. I just got the unlucky piece. But since I have seen other reviewers pointing out similar issues. Next was the V8S. Nothing was wrong with the camera's reliability as such. The camera worked. 
I took it apart to confirm what CPU was being used since at the time of reviewing Eken did not tell me the CPU used, which came across as rather suspicious. Easy way or hard way, I'll have my answer, so I took it apart. Xiaomi presents a interesting case. The camera works fine and the manufacturer is well reputed in general, possibly the biggest company in this group by a large margin. At the time of reviewing the camera and at the time of making this video, Xiaomi does not have Mijia Mini on their website. You cannot search for it. There is no official support page for this product. There is a firmware update floating around in the internet. I'm not sure who wrote it. Mijia Mini is a good camera from a great company that wants nothing to do with their own product. I'll tell you a bit more about it in a moment. I do not know too much about background or history of Hawkeye. I have come to trust its reliability. The camera turns on upon request, does what I need it to do, and that's it. No fuss, no complaints. For this reason, I have been carrying the camera with me more so recently, and underwater shots and so forth come out a treat. It's proven itself to be reliable. SJ7 well, I have personally used SJ Cam products for years now. All of their cameras still work, even the oldest one. SJ Cam releases firmware updates frequently and continually improves their product. I have often praised their efforts with their online activities. So recently I did a test. I wrote emails to each one of these companies saying that the camera shuts off while recording. And the order in which I received the reply was as follows. Eken was the first to reply. They did not offer any help, rather asked me where I bought the camera and what the order number was. The second email came from Hawkeye. They offered two solutions, that is to reset settings and to format the card. The third email was from Xiaomi, which went something like this. I truly understand you are facing Bluetooth issues with your Mijia Mini and regret the inconvenience you have experienced. We are sorry to inform you that as we do not sell this product in your region, so we do not have any updates about the same. As Xiaomi does not provide the international warranty and does not cover the warranty for the products purchased through any other vendor website, so we are unable to assist you further in this regard. Hence, would request you to get back in touch with the point of purchase for further support. Please write us back in case you need any further assistance we will be happy to help you. Next came the reply from TI which tried to blame the micro SD card being used and they recommended various other cards that might solve the problem. The last reply was from SJ Cam that said, would you please take some picture or make a small video to show the detailed problem and send us for checking and confirmation. By the way, may I ask where you bought your camera? Please give us order number to check if it is purchased from our official web shop. We will try our best to help solve the problem, please do not worry. Here is my opinion on this. Xiaomi's response was uncalled for. They would have done less damage if they did not reply. Now we know what the situation would have been like if there was actually a problem. Eken did similarly as well but not in as many words. Hawkeye and TI both offered some help and that's a start. I'm of the opinion they would help further if asked. While SJ Cam's email came last, from what I could gather this was from a support staff and instead of closing the door he actually appears to be interested to help solve the problem. And to tell you frankly, I'm not surprised by SJ Cam's reply as I knew they work harder than others to keep customers happy. It's Xiaomi that is the biggest question mark here. How exactly are they building reputation? So what is the takeaway message in this video? Let's start with the Eken V8S. While the company may come up with decent products in the near future, the V8S is certainly one I would leave behind. On top of that, the after sales support could have been better. Next, the T5e. Well, I was somewhat happy with the camera till it got damaged by seawater. Since then, I have reviewed their newer camera, the E7, which did not have any leaking issue but it had its own shortcomings. Please refer to the full review video for more information. Then comes Mijia Mini. It's a fantastic camera, well built, and most things about it is good. 
the price it sells for these days is nice as well. Lack of accessories out of the box and total lack of manufacturer support is what puts a dent on the overall proposition. The SJ Cam SJ7 Star, the premium product. If someone is after great build quality and top customer support, SJ Cam is the brand for them. Quality and customer support comes at a price. And in this comparison, the SJ7 is the most expensive of them all. As I record this, the price for the SJ7 is near $160 mark. Finally, we have the Firefly 8S. After all this time, the only thing that sets this camera apart is that quietly, it did not fail on anything. It works as good today as it did day one. There is nothing really setting it far apart from the competition except for the fact that there is really not much negative about it. The price is low. It does nearly everything that all the others in this list is doing. So this wraps up the comparison video. But before I end, there is something I would like to raise some awareness about. This is Justin Gitlin and Andre de Grasse. They won silver and bronze medal respectively in 100 meter dash in 2016 Olympics. They set an amazing times of 9.89 seconds and 9.91 seconds respectively. But the best time was set by the gold medal winner Usain Bolt. My point here is that all these are great athletes. The gold medalist had to surpass the formidable to win that title. The message here is this. There are so many videos in YouTube that claims that this is the best camera. While the camera itself may be good, but rarely there is any mention of which one was the second best. Who won the silver and the bronze? Maybe they know. Ask them. Before I leave, I'd like to mention that there are upcoming giveaways. I'll try to make them as much fun as possible. So subscribe and stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.